Hey, this is just a little cut in. I just wanted to quickly say for those people who actually are reading my uh, webcomic that I'm posting on uh, DeviantArt and been waiting for a long time, and this is the original one, by the way. Uh, just know that I'm actually starting up, uh, going to be starting up, uh, up updates on that again regularly. And before I do that, I'm going to get done with the current arc that we're currently in first. And that's so far becoming 50 pages. And I haven't even gotten to the actual, like, big fight portion of it. So just know I am doing it. I'm getting very far into it. So if I'm going to do 10 pages to 11 pages a day, you're going to have multiple days of just constant uploads. Or maybe I'm going to upload it all in one day and you just have yourself a nice little binge watch after months of waiting for, uh, for the next update, you could say. So... Happy to say that. Just wanted to put that out there. And if you don't know, and if you are interested in my webcomic, link's always in the description to head off to my DeviantArt and get started wherever you want. I, I don't usually promote this side of stuff because it, to me it's still in, like, in gameplay terms, early beta. So, so there you go. This is the Universe. Have fun with the uh, reaction. What's up, you guys? It's DMB Universe, and I've actually got myself a setup here. Now, I'm not going to bore you with the details, but let's just say I just found myself a desk and I own it now. Yay! Now... This death battle reaction is going to be very special to me because, one, the other two death battles didn't really interest me as much. I like Doctor Fate and Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange more because of the DCEU, and uh, Ryu versus Jin, I believe. Just, it, and, you know, I'm not a fighting game kind of guy, but I did I did watch those episodes and I did admire the fact that in Ry uh, Ryu versus Jin, they use assets from Ruby, which is definitely amazing, definitely amazing, and they, and they announce... The actual battle I was excited for being Afro with Samurai versus Samurai Jack. Funny enough, me and the other guys in the apartment actually brought this battle up jokingly. Because I'm like, hey, Afro's a Samurai. Hey, Jack's a Samurai. Who do you think will win in a death battle? And even though the, the actual outcome is obvious, <laughs> it was still a fun little back and forth. And for those of you who don't think this, it's obvious. It, 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 I watched all of Afro Samurai along with the movie and all the Samurai Jack and even, you know, you can go on my YouTube channel and, and watch me watch the, the last season of Samurai Jack, showing how much of a fan I am of that. And Afro's done some amazing things. He's blocked a laser. He's cut an RPG in half. He, he's flown into the sky with a giant robot a version of him and defeated it. And, and you know, he, he's, he's a freaking badass. I love him. And plus, he's voiced by Samuel Jackson. So that, that, how do you get more badass than that? I don't know, Jack, who has fought many assortments of creatures, bonnie hunters, assassins, pretty much every day, kind of like gut style, that every second of his life is kind of in danger. He fell from space, he he, he, he strapped some rocks to, uh, all over his body and got trained by a monkey man who got trained by monkey people <laughs> to jump really good. Like, there are a lot of things that Jack has done that can outweigh the skill level of Afro, but I'm not saying that Afro does not have a chance to kill Jack. I'm simply saying that Jack has been through a hell of a lot more than, than Afro has. So, I'm expecting Jack to win, and I'm happy I love both these properties, so I won't be upset either way. Uh, but the main other thing that I'm excited about this death battle is that I heard that it's going to be strictly 2D animated. That's incredible to me, because as a 2D animator myself, I admire that medium too an unprecedented degree. So without boring you any further, and you know those comments in the in comment section saying when the video starts, uh, tell them now because I'm about to start it. Who? Three, two, one, now. This episode is brought to you by Honey, the free shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes oh, on the web, so man. you get the best prices. I, I use this, by the way. Online. I'm not sponsored by these the guys, I uh, but right now. Look, I always have to say this. This There's does no this does work very well. Today. It's free, just takes two clicks to install. Usually I skip ads, money. but this one's actually useful and, and it's free. For free. So well, I'm just encouraging. I'm not much of being paid to sell you this. That's joinhoney.com/battle. Which in a lot of terms is way better than being sponsored because you don't know if they're 100 percent looking the truth but me if i'm suggesting it i there i 100 percent i guarantee you're gonna have some history, level of samurai is one usefulness of with this with this app and dangerous so let's pit two of the best of them in a fight to the death samurai jack the warrior prince lost in time and afro samurai who's one cold-blooded mother ever he's <laughs> because you know he's on the app. it's our job to analyze their weapons armor and skills to find out who would win a death battle 
Okay, so uh, it's, they're they're doing like a Long sort of like recreation of how, when he first met the Scotsman. That's the only time I remember him crossing a bridge and fighting another guy. <laughs> a foolish samurai warrior wielding a magic sword stepped forth to oppose me. Whoop! 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 That whoop <laughs> nameless samurai became known as Jack. 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 Jack was out. Jack. No one actually knows his true Jack. name. Jack. 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 You know, there's a lot of people I know that don't remember that he was given this name by random guys when he first got into <laughs> got, in, got into the future. Upon Aku's return, the emperor and his army were quickly defeated. The last of all hope remained in the hands of his son. Oh, look how small he is. <clears throat> well, uh, to prep for beating the snot out of Aku, Little Jack traveled the world, training with the best of the best. Most notably, he learned horseback riding from a sheikh, staff fighting in Africa, wrestling yeah. from gladiators. Does anyone remember from from playing Koyak, the mounted combat from the Mongols? The Samurai Jack, Jack game on Cartoon Network. Archery from freaking Robin Hood. You know, where it pretty much made you do these uh, mini games things, but it was like really fun and hard. Jack's progress was exceptional. At just eight years old, he defended a whole village from a band of marauders. All before he could even legally drink the good stuff. We're on some Kenshiro levels of I'm I'm gonna train my ass off when I'm young. Just needed one more thing: his pajamas. No, 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 uh. his katana. Katana pajama tomato. That's completely different. One's a weapon, the other's a uh, tire. Aku pulled a bitch move and zapped him hundreds of years into the future. What a waste. Just like when you spend four sleepless years struggling through college and then find out too late that nobody cares about your English major. I thought you graduated from the Yeah, you got, you, evil you, got a, you got a point there, man. Well, you still have to pick a major. Should have chosen a more practical one, Wiz, like mine. Anyway, even All right. though he was trapped in the future, Jack stuck like, to his mission. Like, I have to, to say to the past and take down Aku. That Jack's right first introduction, his first See, big Aku fight, already showcases he has a me. lot of That's durability <laughs> and endurance. And this mystic sword is nearly unbreakable and absolutely incorruptible. And boy, is Jack's good an extremely effective weapon. I was a kid when I first watched this, and that was just like, fire. Vaporize beings of evil and slice through nearly any substance, even adamantium. adamantium. The Wolverine Super Metal? Why is that there? Uh, probably just coincidental naming, but it is shown to be stronger than steel. Of course it is. So the sword Whatever, is awesome it's still adamantium. <laughs> He's strong enough to push over this giant pillar, tough enough to survive a fall from orbit, and fast enough to defeat six bounty hunters in the time it took for one drop of water to hit the ground. By timing the drop, all oh, this man. had to have taken place in about one third of a second. I'm, He's like a ninja samurai. I love that episode ninja and another episode so much because I'll explain afterwards. It just goes to show. For this one in particular, it's clear Jack began dodging after the beam was fired. By examining both Jack and the beam's movement frame by frame, we've concluded his highest reaction speeds must be nearly 70% the speed of light. What? All right. I never really expected it that much. You know, again, I, I was a kid. Well, Jack can jump good. But he did learn how to jump good. That's one of my favorite sayings in this entire freaking show. That. that. By strapping a giant boulder on his back, which compared to his height, you can determine to weigh 39 tons, Jack learned how to leap high enough to clear these trees. Without even trying, by the way, he was just kind of like, Hey, look at me, I'm Jesus. Jungle has a bunch of these ugly baboons running around. And if I were a betting man, which I am, I'd say that this is the African rainforest, where the average tree is about 130 feet tall. Tim's on Jack from my basketball team. Guy's got hops. Yeah, I got mad ups, bro. He survived several exploding missiles with his friend, the Scotsman. Mm. Uh, Why does he look so familiar? Well, I like him. With so much talent, it was <laughs> but it was that some inspiration, buddy? <laughs> and defeated Aku once and for all. But it took a lot longer than it probably should have. Uh -huh. 50 years. Uh -huh. Yeah, good thing time travel makes you stop aging for some reason. But Jack's a good Hey, Josh so says like it's because he skipped his own actual canon death. Can and since he skipped that death, he doesn't die. Also, he continues to prolong his lonely journey over and over just because he frequently puts the needs of others before him. I love this man! <laughs> Still, the forces of evil should watch out for Samurai Jack.
That were, dude, when you get that, and I also watch the part where Bubbles does the, like, the... In the same time frame, she also does the, the 11 thing, and then she also says who else wants some. I'm like, dude, Cartoon Network is the best program, but now I'm very skeptical today, and it sucks. headbands only bring pain and loss. Huh. Such was the case with Afro Samurai. Debatable, then this is probably Proven and broken, it's likely nothing oh, more than the type strip of really cloth. Call him Avro? Yeah, Talk about see, that's always been up in the air. Because justice is not what I would like to call even if they did. human. Have you seen his dad? I think they knew what to expect. Damn, just look at him. Mm. Oh, and hey, look, he's got the number one headband. Here's how this works the person who wears the number one headband is said to rule the world. And the or at least be the baddest motherfucker in the world. Whoever possesses the number two. In contrast, anybody can challenge the owner of the number two for the right to wear that headband, and thus gain the right to challenge the number one. So, like, you just work your way up so that only one guy in the world can challenge you? Mm. Where do I get one of these headbands? Then no one will mess with me. Uh, actually, no, it's a completely separate. Probably happened, yeah. Which young Afro witnessed firsthand when some freak named Justice showed up with the number two and killed his father right in What are you, Justice? Because I I cannot call you human. You got your neck sliced off, nearly all the way sliced off, and you're like, eh. I think it's just actually staying alive if your kid's ever going to do anything great. Or just sticking around for them. Despite knowing that he was effectively creating a future challenger, Justice left Afro alone to mourn his loss. So, of course, Afro swore revenge and started learning swordsmanship under a swordmaster named... Swordmaster! Is that- it, it's- it's correct and straight to the point. I love it. Swordmaster's training of sword mastery. Sword mastery of mastering a sword. ...styles of Kenjutsu and Kendo. Kenjutsu is all about how to kill an opponent as fast as possible, while Kendo is more about discipline and being zen and stuff. Naturally, Uh, going back to the time- Yeah, especially when you try to go back to those times where you used to smile. Man, it hurts. <laughs> ...body and mind, instilling upon him a sense of honor, or Fushido. But that didn't quite mesh with Afro's thirst for vengeance. So when he found out that Swordmaster had the number two headband all along, he knew what he had to do. It's like, what's the difference between Afro's uh, uh, search for justice and Kratos' search for justice? Burden, Ninja Ninja. Wait, did I say justice? I mean revenge. <laughs> Where'd this guy come from? He's amazing. Hey, don't we look like shit? How you been, man? Well, it's not entirely clear. He's there, but at the same time, not there. Mm -hmm. Ninja Ninja is believed to be the guardian of the number two headband. Eh. But all he ever really does is talk, talk, and talk some more. He got arrows and grenades and shit. You ain't got no chance, dude. Is that a oh, RPG? He <laughs> got an RPG. Right back back. Psychological stress. I'm definitely going with that one. That makes so much more sense to me, and it makes Afro's character that much more layered. That if you take whatever he says at face value, that's exactly what Afro is thinking at the exact moment. He's expressing the emotions Afro wants to express. I love that. He's actually more akin to a Ronin, a samurai with no master. And so, with his swordsman... Because the whole thing about samurais, they always carry two swords. ...searching for justice, carrying an arsenal fit for revenge. Including his father's sword. This super long blade has lasted through decades of battle without much issue. Perfect for kicking some ass. Mm. He also has a steel comb, which can be a surprisingly effective offensive and defensive tool. And since he doesn't care about that honor BS, no. he's not afraid to play dirty by attacking with his sandals. <laughs> the road to justice, that's that's a skill, attacking with your sandals. All manner of dangerous enemies. Luckily, he's more than capable of dealing with each and every one of them. He's strong enough to cut other swords in half. Throw his sheath through another guy's throat, and even tear off metal arms. Pretty impressive, as many modern metals have tensile strength as high as 80,000 pounds per square inch. Sounds impressive, Afro but again... fast enough to cut bullets out of thin air, and even a laser beam. I should note that it's not a plasma-based beam. It bounces off reflective surfaces, doesn't explode upon contact, and it's literally labeled a laser. Okay. This means yeah. Afro blocked a beam that moved as fast as light. At More than 670 three. million miles per hour. Get yeah, alright. I didn't know it was that, that fast. Okay, I didn't know the properties of what classifies as a laser beam being the light laser beam. Because if that was the, if it was the case in, like, Star Wars, man, like, Jedi are, like, monolithic.
Oh, Samuel Jackson, never leave us. This tree nearby is most likely a Japanese mountain ash, which can sometimes grow as high as 30 feet. With that in mind, we compared its height to the fragmentation created by the explosion, mm -hmm. and compared the resulting surface area to the sheer force for granite. With this, we deduce the RPG's highest possible explosive yield must be around 72 tons of TNT. Damn! It has a heavier pack than the than the boulder that Jack was carrying around, but that's completely different circumstances, obviously. But by the end, he cut down justice, took his revenge in hand, and proved to the world that Afro Samurai is number one. Until a lot of shit happened in a movie, but you know. Why you got to kill all my men? Why you gotta kill me? Nothing personal. It's just revenge. That's why. Uh, that's what one of the arguments I get for Kratos uh, right, because he's actually a really layered character. But there's a whole bunch of other people on the internet who did this explanation way better than me. So I'm just gonna enjoy this. This, however, I'm skipping. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. The fact that this is all going to be just 2D, it, 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 it gives both respect to how great the animation is on both shows. Your sword smells of blood. Your shit too. So does yours. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't use always. So you have to thank the new season for that one, Jack. Really mirroring uh, the Scotsman's fight. Yeah. Zax has been blinded before, multiple times, actually. But one thing I have to say, the one of the major cool the coolest parts of Afro Samurai is the fact that he knows how to fight in air but he's good too huh. you jump good oh uh thank you <laughs> <laughs> odd how they want to kind of oh but I would never actually expect uh <laughs> him to say that. I thought that would be more a, a Ninja Ninja's line. I don't even think they're actually gonna use Ninja Ninja now that I'm thinking about it. Exceptional warrior, and his skills would absolutely dominate this most sword fights. However, Jack has Jack had, had a lot luck. of yeah. experience with opponents who fight dirty, and Afro could not stand up to his physical superiority. Yeah, Afro never showed strength like how Jack lifted that 39-ton boulder. Not often, Jack boy, what for you? Well, for most blind. notably against Afro the three blind archers, yeah. Speed laser beam, but based on the distance between him and the Afro droid, he only he reads the wind. Around 21% the speed of light to do this. Still putting him at impressive relativistic speeds, but not even half as quick as Jack. Mm -hmm. Also, while Afro survived that mega-sized RPG explosion, don't forget how Jack survived a fall from orbit. While it does seem yeah. the space I was wondering how they didn't, why they didn't do something like that. It's, it's like the only reason why he couldn't break the Scotsman so it's because magic it is, but you know. Starting his descent from the Carmen line, or the boundary between Earth's atmosphere and space, Jack covered a distance of 62 miles in just under 7 seconds moving well over terminal velocity. Thanks to being propelled by exploding space speed. 
which means his top velocity was approximately 37,000 miles per hour. Mm. Adding the spacesuit's weight to his own, this means his impact force must have equaled about 19 megatons of force. All right. Way more than anything Afro survived. And then he just got up and walked away. Badass. In the end, Jack was just too fast, yeah. too strong, too tough, and too well trained for Afro to <clears throat> handle. I hate you so what? much. I, you Samurai didn't even try to make an Afro Jack. joke. You're just like, okay, let's just go off the animation this time. Oh Jesus! Thanks for watching. If you guys want right. exclusive commentary, I love this app. I love this one. It, again, you kind of see the outcome coming if you really look at Jack's feats. But who's next? Come on. Ca oh, Carnage! Lucy? Alright! Sherzies! Lucy's! Alright, Lu- alright. <laughs> interesting. Interesting matchup. I didn't know this was a heavily requested one. I, I tell you the absolute truth, but I'll talk about that after I get through talking about this episode. And, I, I mean, like, as soon as I heard about this, I was very like, yes, yes, this needs to, needs to happen. This is going to be a good fight. I'm happy to know that, at least in Death Battles, like, I'm going to say lore of the battle universe they're doing here, uh, Jack is the most powerful, well, at least skilled opponent that he's ever fought. At least, when it, because I do believe the hunters that he had to face were better, in a sense. Because if I had to have those hunters, if you don't know what I'm talking about, they're like cat people, I think. And they were like legendary hunters from across the universe that Aku tried to find them it, personally. To go take on Jack. And they won. They beat Jack. But. The one of the reasons why I say they think. Uh, I think. With this. Afro is one of. Uh, his more tougher opponents. Is because he actually managed to take off a limb from Jack. Jack has never lost a single one of his limbs. He didn't even lost it like a pinky or anything. To any other opponent with a sword or any other type of weaponry. Uh, but I still think the Hunters are better. Because they were doing all that. While not trying to kill him. <laughs> unless I. Unless I was getting it wrong. Because if they were trying to kill him, then yeah, then it's kind of debatable. But I, I, for some reason, I think the ending is kind of messing with me. It, uh, I think they were trying to kill him, but he was so skilled to kind of just laid back and let him tire out. And they gained that respect and didn't hand him over to Aku. Because I forget if Aku wanted him alive so he can kill him himself, or they tried to kill him. Either or, I, I, they're very comparable in, in forms of uh, how Jack really had a hard time taking out an opponent. That's mainly the point I'm trying to get across here. Afro has done a lot of things. I'm surprised they have not used Ninja Ninja. I, I thought that would be prime, like, comedic opportunity, him showing up once, and that's it. Uh, because, tell you the truth, Afro would never have said, oh, man, you jumped good. He he might have said it, but not in that type of tone, not in this general sense. It, it, would, be, it, ninja, it would be Ninja Ninja in the background and be like, oh, man, you jumped good, or something like that. Like, you, you know what I mean. <laughs> but that's a nitpick thing. That has nothing to do with the actual battle itself. That's just like... It's weird how you want to take that as an opportunity. But, yeah, I, I agree with this outcome wholeheartedly. Uh, and the battle itself was just well animated and well well done all, all around. And they did some tropes of, of both sides. Uh, uh, especially with Jack, when he gets his stupid hat, it, it somehow always needs to get, like, broken, blown away, or torn apart. He never can keep his freaking hat. <laughs> Luckily, they're so easy to make. Uh, yeah, so... Okay, yeah, that's pretty much all I really have to say about the battle, other than just praising both characters for, for what they are and what they do. And yeah, I guess I could bring up my personal, like, who I would have preferred better. And, and it may sound weird. It may sound weird. But I thought Jack versus Link from The Legend of Zelda would be a better matchup, only because because I'm kind of going Death Battle Logic here. They have certain similarities and have certain similarities. Lee me who want them to fight. But you guys can free to tell me how unbalanced this is because they they both had to go through time to defeat to defeat their uh their main enemy uh one un uh one unwillingly and one willingly of course but the unwilling part was the fact that once he went back uh, forward through time he kind of caused the problem to begin with so you can kind of say it's both in, in the same sense uh so equally as bad um one got back from the past to defeat their enemy one defeated their enemy in the future and sooner or later has to defeat him in the past, or was technically defeated in the past due to his actions in the future. And they both have a blade that was specifically tailored to fight their specific other. So, yeah. But something tells me Link's speed uh, wouldn't compare to Jack's. 
and the Master Sword we would be protecting from being broken from Jack's uh, uh, Jack's attacks because it is made of magic. Unless you're unless you're Breath of the Wild, then you're just dumb. But whatever, I'm not gonna talk about Breath of the Wild stupid management systems or weapons. And let's just say go off cannon resources. The Master is not not supposed to break. All right, that's it. All right, uh, and it was just like those similarities right there. But then again, since they're both righteous and heart. I don't even think that both their weapons can hurt each other. <laughs> Unless I think the Master Sword can still hurt people. It just... I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, that's just an up in the air thing. But Lucy versus Carnage. Alright. I, I, I'm not going to sit here and say that I know everything about Elf and Lied. Uh, because it has been a long time since I watched that anime. Like, long freaking time. The main thing I know about Lucy is that she has hand do hand dilly doos that I like to call like handstands. If you got the joke. Please don't hurt me. <laughs> Handstands. And... Uh, and Carnage... I forget if people can see them if they have like a certain thing or if they're always invisible. I, that's the main thing of that. See, that's that's what I'm talking about. I, I believe that they're always invisible, which doesn't help Carnage, but I think Carnage has like a heat-seeking type of thing. I have no idea anything about Carnage. I know Venom way more than Carnage. Uh, so, I'm gonna watch this one, because, you know, anime versus another medium has always been the wildly debated topics in, in, in Death Battle, and will this be another battle where the anime character always loses, or will this be a version where it wins? I honestly don't care, because, to me, uh, Death Battle's never been biased in this sort of thing, so if Carnage wins, they're gonna have a good reason for it. If Lucy wins, they're gonna have a good reason for it. That's always been my philosophy with this, uh, with this channel, and pff, it's, it's gonna be fun. Hell! Actually, really think about it. This was another one of those scenarios, wasn't it? Jack is from a cartoon. Afro's from an anime. Afro lost. But it makes sense, because Jack is baller. I mean... So if this is the same case, it, it is funny having another back-to-back -back anime versus another medium uh, uh, fight. Uh, but yeah. Anyway, let's see if Karnas can take on the win to help out uh, Venom's win. Because I do believe he won against Bane? Bane? Bane. Bane. Uh... So, hey, good luck, good luck, Carnage. Got you got Venom to catch up with, and Lucy, give a win for the anime boys. I guess. I mean, hold on, how many anime girls that were in this de in Death Battle? Because I know there's been a lot of anime guys. It, 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 Ursa's one. Ursa's one that immediately comes to mind. Hmm. Okay, but it, but I don't count anime versus anime battles. It's it's mostly the anime versus comic book, anime versus game, anime anime versus like cartoon that always gets like. The most, oh my god, Jeff Bell's doing another battle with this. They're obviously gonna go with the other character in that anime. Look, stop, guys. They're not like that. They're they're pretty chill dudes. I talk to them. I, I, I you want me to show the picture again? And they still come to Kura Sushi. They still do this. I, they're they're chill guys. They do their job right. All right. You you can question a certain amount of things that they put into the death battle uh, via like scaling and stuff like that, and how they keep not mentioning travel speed and. Reaction speed as two different speeds. They're they're two different speeds, guys. Uh, but that's about it. That's all I gotta say. So, since I like Carnage as a villain more, <laughs> I gotta go with him as my as my fan pick. But if I really have to think about it, I think Lucy has some upper hand. I think there's some drawback with their power, which I think they might uh, that w if Carnage lasts long enough, they might be able to exploit. Lucy kind of has like a Akira thing, Tetsuo kind of thing, where if she uses her power too much, she might, you know, either lose control, turn to something. I don't remember, but I it's like lingering in my head. So if if I'm close to the ball mark, elaborate on it. If I'm dead wrong, again elaborate what I, what I'm not missing with uh, with Lucy. But the main thing Lucy's gonna have to get behind is Carnage's ridiculous regeneration of capabilities, and that's about it. Uh, because I believe they do have the same amount of destructive force, uh, and that's about it. That's all I gotta really say. So, hope you guys enjoyed this reaction. Hopefully, uh, uh, the next battle is gonna be great. I'm, I'm still waiting for Tank and Top and Girl and Lagan. It's not gonna happen. I know it's not gonna happen. Or, or maybe, or maybe, uh, uh, uh Ryuko, uh, Ryuko Matoi. Somebody from Trigger. Somebody from Trigger, alright? Anyone from Trigger. <laughs> okay. So, this is gonna be a universe. I'll see you next time. Uh, later.